Hello, Chloe, and welcome to the podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. No worries. I always love the little chats before we start recording. <laughs> and then we have to act like we weren't talking when we say hello. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm like in the middle of laughing while I'm also saying hello. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> How are you this afternoon? I am good this afternoon, thank you. Yes. Um, I've had a bit of a frazzled day, but I'm excited to be chatting with you. It's been a while since we've caught up like this. I know, and we don't usually do video calls. Like usually it's like voice memos back and forth. I love a voice memo. Yeah, I love a rant too. (laughs) Sign me up for a rant and a voice memo any day. Um, But no, this is lovely to be here. Thank you for having me. No worries. Well, to the listeners who don't know Chloe Styler and your story, tell us a bit about your music journey. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, it started very, I was very little when I first started um, like falling in love with music I suppose it sounds kind of silly but I started playing piano when I was seven and I was put into lessons by my parents and I was put into singing lessons around the same age and then I turned 13 and obviously it was the era of Taylor Swift um, as she was coming up and I really wanted to play guitar so I got gifted an acoustic guitar for my birthday my 13th and it is still the guitar that I play at every gig so that's pretty cool And um, the rest is kind of history from there in regards to songwriting. I just kept playing and I taught myself the, the, um, the guitar just thanks to YouTube and wrote my first song at about 15 and no, you will never hear it. I will never even just send it to you privately, Chelsea. Um, But it, uh, yeah, it just was a love that I, um, and I feel very lucky to be able to write songs because my dad says it to me um, quite often that he wishes he'd be able to do that because it's such a gift that we have that we can put thoughts into music and um, relate to people that way and also just like get them off our chest. Like literally last night, I had such a lazy day yesterday. This is a complete side note, but I had such <laughs> a lazy day yesterday. Um, I was just lounging, should have just been doing other things. And then it was, you know, dinner time and I thought I need to be productive. And then two songs just fell out of me. And oh, that's lovely. Yeah, it was really cool. So I feel very fortunate that I can do that. Um, it's not an everyday occurrence by any means. But anyway, and then I started releasing music about seven years ago. And that was, I had no idea what I was doing. I still don't really know what I'm doing. But at least I have a little bit more experience of not knowing what I'm doing. And uh, I just started doing the festivals as I could and playing and really like worked the cover gig circuit on the Gold Coast for a while and just got my what do they call it? Like your chops? Like I got gig fit. Yeah. Yeah. And I still do cover gigs, but not as much anymore. And it's more just like private events and stuff for people. But um, I really love playing my own music now and um, doing like my own shows or our own shows and uh, festivals. And yeah, that's me in a nutshell, I think. Did I miss anything? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you did, but we'll talk more about yeah. it. I'll get, I'll get deeper into it because I want to know more. But okay. I feel like that... Um, switch from cover gigs to original gigs and cover musician to original musician is so interesting because it's like you're some you know you do earn decent money doing cover gigs and yeah you know I know so many people that just do cover gigs and they earn great money and then as soon as you switch to being an original musician you're just spending money all the time and it's all just the like, time. obviously it's a lot more rewarding and mm-hmm. there's nothing I hate worse than cover gig in the corner footy on behind you like it's just soul crushing so I totally understand why we do make that switch I'm sure you Mm. had a lot of those experiences oh yes I did um I started cover gigging when I was 19 and I was a complete novice to all things music I had no idea what I was doing um but I'm really glad I did start around that age because I also around that age, I started developing generalized anxiety and um, I kind of just had to throw myself in the deep end. And when you're putting yourself out there for three hours singing songs that you're hoping people know, or um, I don't know about you, but like I never wanted to be the center of attention, like at a cover gig. I just wanted to mm. be the background noise and um, then like add in dealing with anxiety for the first time and, and all of that. It was just like a really interesting learning experience for me and like character ve- development for me um, as a person. And uh, yeah, there, there's some doozies. There's some stories about cover gigs that, yeah, they just, we all have them, don't we? But they're fun. And 
<laughs> and you got through it and you made the money and the money paid for something fun or whatever and um you know it all has its place but yeah I actually did play a really fun cover gig a couple of weeks ago for a yoga retreat and they wanted oh. me just around a campfire so like I'll still do things like that and they got me to play my own songs and yeah it was really nice yeah I love that and I think when you do have an audience that obviously they love the covers they're always gonna enjoy that but do give you that opportunity to play your original music and actually have an interest in it I feel like that's when it's so rewarding totally but it is totally. hard to find that <laughs> it is <laughs> yeah let me know if you find any <laughs> I will for sure so obviously you kind of brushed over your music journey, but I feel like you've done so many cool things. Like obviously I've followed you for quite a few years now and I feel like you've always posted these things. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. So what are some of your <laughs> highlights of your okay, music no, career? Number one highlight would be playing CMA Fest last year in Nashville. That is always going to be a highlight in numero uno. Uh, but that was terrible Spanish on my behalf, by the way. <laughs> We're just not going to talk about that. Um, so that's number one. Some other really cool things I've done. I've played some really great support slots over the last few years. In 2020, just before everything like shut down for a while, I supported Tony Hadley from the band Spandau Ballet, um, which was like really popular in like the 80s. Um, and I loved their music because I grew up listening to a lot of that kind of music with my mum in the car driving to school. So when I got the offer, I like lost my mind. I also lost my mind because I got to like play at the Tivoli in Brisbane, which was like a dream venue to play at the time and still is. So that was really cool. I've played venues like the Tivoli and Enmore Theatre um, and the Gov in Adelaide and um, the Forum in Melbourne, which was amazing. So these were all like supporting international acts that came over to Australia, um, which is just so cool to me that I've even get trusted to warm up the stage for people of that calibre. Um, some other like amazing things uh, you're allowed to brag this is your bragging section. I know <laughs> Australians are so bad at it like, this is one thing I've noticed about like um Australian versus Americans like we don't like talking ourselves mm. up at all like not that Americans do but like they're just I feel like maybe it's a bit easier for some reason we just are like I don't want to say anything about me I don't actually want to tell you anything <laughs> except like Literally. my name uh, one cool thing that I'm very proud of is I've played at the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville as well, which was really, really fun and really, really cool because, you know, the history there. And I also was obsessed with the TV series Nashville and just being there is one thing. And then to be up on that stage and getting to play my own music was really, really cool. Um, and genuinely like something I've ticked off my bucket list now. So that's crazy. Um, yeah, I'd say those are like my my top three, like playing CMA Fest, playing the Bluebird and being trusted to support international acts. Well, those are some pretty amazing highlights, especially Thank the national you. ones. I feel like that's obviously we can do, you know, amazing shows here and that feels incredible. But to also do that overseas, I'm sure that's yeah. just incredible feeling. It is really, really cool. But then like you and I, we've also played um, Riders Rounds in Nashville. So that is really cool. Like it's just being able to play there in general is really fun. So, yeah. Definitely. And speaking of Nashville, how many times have you been there now? Because I can't keep track. You can't keep up. <laughs> uh, I also just booked another trip. So, sorry. <gasps> Definitely can't when? keep up. When? Going... Can you tell me on this podcast? <laughs> yeah, I can tell the podcast. Um, I'm going back in October. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just spent all my money on accommodation. So, I'm sorry to myself. But um, I, I have been... Four times. I first went when I was 15 with my family. We were already over there. I was um, performing in the World Choir Games with my school choir in oh. Cincinnati. So random. Wow. Um, that is random. And, <laughs> yeah, thanks. And then mum and dad kind of like collected me from Cincinnati and we went to Nashville for a few nights. And then I didn't get back there again until last year for CMA Fest. And then I was lucky to go two times last year and I'm going again Um this year which will be my second trip this year so it'll be my fifth trip later this year which is really cool wow and I, I mean you're spending a lot of time there do you have plans of moving there what's what's the plan uh, yeah I hope to that is the plan um in some capacity you know I have my dog here which is mm, I don't even want to think about having to leave her because I will just start crying and no one wants that um but I also have my life here and my family and my friends and 
Australia is home, but um, there's just so much opportunity over there. And especially during like the summer-ish months, I, ha- I would like to spend a bit more time there and just really like feel what it's like to live there. Like in June, May, June, I was there for a month. So that was really fun to be able to go to Pilates and rent a car and drive around and feel like I was a local. But um, yeah, I think give it a couple of years and hopefully I'll be there a bit more permanently. Yeah, I totally know what you mean about like feeling like you do live there. Obviously, I've only been there for shorter trips compared to you. But <laughs> my first trip, I was just like tourists, you know, just having yeah. fun, did a little bit of writing. And then the second time, like it really did feel like I was doing music full time and living there. And it was just like a dream. So it's yeah. the dream. Hey, like it's just so cool to be able to wake up every day and do something music related. Um because I don't have that on the Gold Coast. I do just have um, also like a part-time job and I'm, to fund the music. So the, the dream one day is to be able to wake up every day and put my mind to something music related. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like in Nashville, it's so normalized to do that. Like there's so many people yeah. that are just doing music full-time. But in Australia, I feel like even, you know, so many of the bigger acts, they still have a job on the side and yeah I feel like it's so much harder to do it full time here which sucks yeah it's it's a lot of work <laughs> I mean it's a lot of work anywhere um but trying to balance so many different things is is hard and I was doing university I actually um started a whole new degree in 2021 because I didn't clearly have enough on my plate and I got halfway through it and then I realized this is just not going to work so I've had to pause that so I could at least like go to America or release a song and not feel like I'm doing 50% of the work you know because a release you know how how much energy goes into releasing a song and and how much time goes into all the behind the scenes leading up to it and then pretty much all the work goes into it leading up to it hey and then the song comes out release day and you've got to push it on socials but if you haven't done like that back work behind the scenes prior to it you're not setting it up for its best success so um yeah I decided being a teacher probably wasn't for me but (laughs) uh, I'd rather be a musician yeah (laughs) yeah I feel like that's I know a lot of people that have studied teaching or you know became a teacher alongside their music so it must just be a popular choice super yeah it's very conducive to the musician lifestyle because my plan was to become a relief teacher and mm. just work casually and pick up work when I needed it during the week and then do my music on the weekends. But I'm hoping to get to a point where I am doing music every day of the week, not just weekends. Yes. Well, I'm sure yeah. you will get there. <laughs> Thank you. Sure, we I both hope will, so. hopefully. <laughs> Fingers <Yeah>. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to you about genres because it's one of my favorite things to speak about. And I know you have kind of been in a few different genres, I guess you'd say, uh, within your journey and your music career. So what are you kind of leaning into now? What have you done in the past? I know we've kind of spoken about this personally yeah. a little bit, but like obviously now you're kind of country, but you've done a bit of pop in the past. Talk to us about your 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 thoughts on genres. Yeah, I love this topic. I think it's such an interesting topic, uh, especially as an emerging artist and still essentially finding our sound and finding where we fit. I originally, uh, pardon me, I re- originally started out, my first EP was straight down the line country and um I'm really proud of that I'm really proud of those songs that is what those songs deserved and I think that's something that's really key in this conversation is I believe songs should get the life they deserve uh production wise but also staying within a realm that you set for yourself you know so my EPs side A and side B which came out in 2022 and 2023 they were produced by Andy Mack and he is a phenomenal producer from the Central Coast and he mainly works in the pop world so uh when I took my songs to him I had been really influenced by pop music or indie pop music at the time and I still am I still listen to a lot of that music because I just am obsessed with the melodies and the honest lyricism and feeling like I was sitting there having a conversation with the person that's singing to me like it just feels like they're your best friend with the young uh, female indie pop singer songwriters at the moment. They, the lyrics are unreal. I could talk about that for days. But when I took my songs to Andy, I did want a bit more of that pop production. 
And I think we nailed it. I was really proud of it. We, I'm the, I truly believe the best record on planet Earth in the history of time ever and probably forever is Casey Musgraves' Golden Hour. So that was a huge reference and I'm really proud of that. So at the time I was calling it indie pop country and now <laughs> – now I'm just calling it pop country and that's where I land and where I'm happy to call myself if I have to genre myself. But some people will hear like my latest track, Call It. It's a really more, it's more country. I remember playing it for you in Nashville and I was like, I don't know if this is going to do anything because it's a little different to, you know, Time Bomb or something. And um, lo and behold, it's doing pretty well. So I'm really yeah. stoked with that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just think the topic is so interesting because some people – the weight it holds for some people, like what genre you are or where, you, yeah, it, it, I'm trying to find the words. It's mm, it's tricky. It's one. just, <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting because mm. then you look at TikTok or just social media in general and like, for example, there's this artist, Olivia O'Brien, and she is a pop artist, but the latest record she's just released and all of her branding for the EP that has come out, I think it was in June, it's very country leaning. And then mm. she just released this single a couple of weeks ago ago, and it's this little pop song. And she was like, yeah, I just felt like releasing a pop song. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. That's so fun. Just do what feels right, you know, for the song and for you and where you're at in that life, in, 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 your, in that time of your life. And yeah, who knows? Maybe when I'm like 50, I'll release a jazz record. I don't know. I probably Can't won't. Wait <laughs> We'll revisit this in a, in a few decades. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if Chloe's jazz record has come to fruition or not. <laughs> Maybe. I can play the saxophone, so I might be able to weave that in there somewhere. <laughs> there you go. But, yeah, it's such an interesting conversation and I feel like I'd love to see a world where genres never existed. Like I can't even imagine what that would be like, but I feel like it would be so freeing. Like I don't know if it is – just country obviously I haven't really been in other genres but I feel like country is very specific with what they want and if you don't fit into that very specific country mold you're not country and that's why I guess again I've always I've always gone as pop country because I'm not super country and I don't want to kind of just be in that box but then you know you start trying to call yourself pop but you still want to be country because you still have those elements in your music and it's such a tricky like thing to figure out and also explain to people especially when you also have been again in that country space for so long to then try and I guess expand or experiment is something not everyone understands I found anyway yeah and a word I actually heard a couple of weeks ago a genre I heard was contemporary country and I think mm. that actually is a really nice way to sum up my music or even your music to be honest because like you still land on country playlists and you're still um, getting added to CMT Australia and stuff. So clearly like there's people that hear your music and think, oh, it's a country song, which is cool and interesting. To even Like it just, <laughs> it's just so funny. This is why the topic is so interesting because like I hear obsessed and I'm not, I think it's a pop song and I love it. Yeah. And, and, and then it gets added to CMT. So I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I just think I could talk about this forever and – I think it's really cool that people want to talk about it and I love having this conversation with people because um, it kind of tests the, the boundaries a little bit, you know. it's it, it can be a little uncomfortable to talk about it sometimes too, but at the end of the day, music is music. It's meant to make you feel something and if that's a pop country song or a contemporary country song or just a pop song, okay. Did you feel something? Did it make you feel Amen. something? Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Done. Conversation finish. <laughs> genres tick we've covered it tick. <laughs> <laughs> sorry such a rant there no I love it I feel like every time I say genres to someone it's just immediate rant and I'm the same immediate like anyone rant. that says it to me I'm like yep I can talk about this for ages <laughs> yeah like I gotta stop myself really <laughs> we'll move on okay so a topic I do want to talk about with you which I have warned you kind of mm. about this topic because um, <laughs> I feel oh, like we've both had similar experiences Yes. And this is the topic of writing songs about romantic interests, I'll say. Um, I want to know your experience with this, uh, if it has been positive. Obviously, I know some of the stories and <laughs> tell whatever you want to tell. Um, but I'm yeah, not I just love dropping to... anybody. No, no name dropping. <laughs> but I just love to know what your experiences have been like with that. 
So personally, for me, it's just therapy to r- write songs about those experiences. And for me, it's always a man. Um, and that's okay. Um, it just turns out that most of the songs I release are about experiences in relationships as well. So it's been funny at times. I've had some really fun experiences from ex-boyfriends um, calling me on release days and saying, great song, when it's clearly about them and they know it's about them. But then I'm also like, yeah, thanks. Like at least we've gotten to the point where we can when we can acknowledge, acknowledge it and stuff and um, move on from the yuckiness of whatever the situation was. And maybe the song was something that provided that bridge for us, you know? Um, but also then there's some people that I just won't answer the phone. Like, it's just not happening. Mm. Like, we're just, we're done. I've written the song. I've moved on. That's why on. we block people. <laughs> Amen. Blocking, it's my new favorite thing to do. <laughs> block. It's only with men that hurt my feelings. But um, yes. the, I don't know. I think moving forward, like, I've gotten very honest with my songwriting. And I've always been entirely honest and everything's always been about me and my life and what I was going through, Um, which again, because I was in my early 20s is all about boys. Uh, And I know there's people that don't write about that, that write about like life. (laughs) I could never, I could never be that. Yeah. I wonder what that's like to sit down and just like write a happy song about (laughs) literally anything else other than a man. But uh, alas... It's not for me because last night we're both about one man. <laughs> we love that. We it love is, that. It is therapy and I've had this yeah. conversation, you know, with so many musicians um, and being a songwriter, it's just such a weird experience that I don't think people that aren't songwriters can, you know, understand um, no. because it is such a weird thing. And most of them never see the light of day. That's mm. something really key to note and I'm always very, very – respectful in my delivery and my promotion I will never name drop somebody Mm. I will never identify them because they didn't ask for it and that's not fair of me to do that to them but uh whoopsie if they hear the lyrics and go damn that's that's about me yep well probably shouldn't have done that really mean thing that you did so good for you but I don't know I think I'm a bit nervous next year there's a few songs coming out that I don't know. I'm just a bit like, cool, why have I done this to myself? But they're recorded, lyrics are done. And at the end of the day, it's a time capsule of my life at that period. And if that's what I felt like I needed to get off my chest, then so be it. Yeah, I feel you. It's so nerve wracking. I made a whole TikTok rant about this the other day because I was Did just you? like, people. I missed it. Yeah. Oh, you have to look at it. I, I was just like. It. So many people are like, you know, you write so many songs about exes and, you know, romantic interests and whatever it is. And it's like, I don't think you understand how nerve wracking it is to actually release those. Like, again, we write them for therapy to process, but then it's like actually choosing to release it is such a mind fuck. (laughs) So nerve wracking. I actually had never felt more nervous than I did on the release day for Call It. I kind of stopped promoting it I'm not sure if you noticed but like leading up to I just got real I went quiet I did realized mm. the reality of what was about to happen come the 31st of July uh I felt very exposed and moving forward with my next releases I'm going to just keep feeling exposed but I also then I find that as a way to really connect with people because I'm laying myself out on the line and all of my emotions and and my true self is there and like someone's got to do it because someone's there's people out there that are needing something to relate to it and needing music to to help them through something and I'm happy to I'm happy to take one for the team but uh call it was that was a lot that was that was a hectic day in my brain but I've moved on so it's fine that's good. Well, yeah. it was worth releasing. It's gone well. Thank you. People, Thank and these you. these are the songs that relate to people, and that's like how we yeah. get new fans and become better musicians by you know putting putting it all out there. Yeah, thanks. That's what I'll tell myself. <laughs> I just keep. That's what I also tell myself. Doing this, yeah, doesn't work. But <laughs> doesn't work. We'll just not sleep most nights, but that's okay. Yeah, the anxiety is so fun. <laughs> I love what you said about um being I guess respectful in the promotion which I also try to do as much as possible obviously we don't name drop we're not usually super obvious about whose songs are about but yeah I've definitely had some experiences of people thinking songs were about them that weren't even about them which I feel like you told me a story about that too 
Yeah, it happens, doesn't it? It's quite funny. And, yeah. you know, I just let them believe it. Yeah. If that's, if that's what they want to believe, <laughs> believe it. Go for it. It's probably not a nice song. Like, I'm not sure yeah, why that's you the want thing. it never nice to be songs. about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I just can't wait for the day that, like, I call you and I go, oh, my God, I've written, like, a happy love song because literally never happened in my life. But there will be one. And everyone will be just like praising because there'll be happiness coming from my Spotify. But uh, <laughs> I have a song one coming day. out in a couple of months and it's just not that either. So <laughs> uh, at least we wrote a love song together. Yeah, for you. <laughs> yeah, but still, <laughs> you still wrote it. Yeah, I guess I could tap into someone else. <laughs> you don't want to know what's going off in this brain of mine. <laughs> Yeah, I I relate. Like, I feel like the sad songs come out so easily. So easy. And then I'm like, I want to write a happy love song or, yeah, a song just about life. And it's just like, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. I must draw upon sadness and emotion and drama. Yeah. But those are the best songs. I stand by that. So I don't care. Done. (laughs) Now, talking about low times, (laughs) not in your life, but really going on that uh tangent um I want to talk about struggles within music because you know we've spoken about many times before it's so hard being a musician there's so many different struggles I guess I want to know what I have been some of your biggest struggles and things that you do find really hard within the music industry number one that comes to mind is like comparison self-comparison to other people and remaining true to me and believing in myself that's not the word you'd but you know what I'm talking about like yeah um, that saying that comparison is the thief of joy is something that I have been drilling into myself over the last 18 months especially but like my whole life but 18 months it's been really difficult and um, has been something that I've been struggling with internally just seeing everything on social media that other people post like especially in December when the Spotify wrapped comes Mm. out um that's something I'm actually really excited to see mine this year because I've had some great growth um on my Spotify but for the last six years since I've started releasing music prior to this year my Spotify wrapped has always been very um humble and that's okay because everybody starts somewhere but then you see other people um who have had a bit more success than you or landed on a couple more playlists and whatever and their numbers appear bigger than yours and that's when self-doubt starts to creep in and you wonder why am I even doing this like I'm not getting as far as I want to be or um, I'm not where I thought I would be by now and um, you know I'm in my mid-20s and I really thought I would be somewhere else personally within my life like not writing sad depressing breakup songs about boys that keep hurting my feelings first of all Um, and you know when you're that little girl you think oh I'm gonna be married and have babies and all of that before I'm 30 yeah, that's just <laughs> not happening. Like, it's just not on my radar. But adjusting and, and you know, moving those goalposts and um, kind of doing that on the go is is hard. Um, and probably my biggest struggle at all times is, you know, the self-comparison to other people and um, social media doesn't help at all with that. So I wish I had the magic answer to say, get off your phone, but I don't because I scroll. I, I <laughs> doom scroll like every day. Just yeah, I, I couldn't stop looking, but I'd love to because it would help. I'd love to. <laughs> My brain would love it if I stopped as well. But alas, for now, I don't. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say that's my biggest struggle. Secondly is um, like having to speak up for yourself and advocate for yourself in this industry, especially I'm self-managed and I'm independent. So putting your big girl pants on sometimes and having hard conversations is is a struggle. But again, they have to be done. And if you really feel strongly about something, you just have to advocate for yourself and be true to you. And over the last couple of years, I've had to have some hard conversations with people. And I'm proud of myself in hindsight of how I handled it and the personal growth that's happened. But um, at the time, it can be a little uncomfortable and a yucky feeling, you know, having to either let somebody down or let yourself down or, or whatever it is. It can just be a little yucky. Yeah, that is so true. And I definitely feel you on both of those points, especially the comparison. Mm. Um, And, you know, you see, again, talking about age, we're not 
you know, old. We are in our mid twenties, but it we does feel old. like <laughs> we're not old. Uh, but it does feel when you see all of these, you know, such young artists. Like I can't remember who it was, but I found out someone was like twenty two or something. Oh, it was um, what's her name? Sings um, Wild Carter Faith. Oh, how She's old like, is she? I can't remember exactly, but like twenty two or something crazy. Twenty three, maybe. <laughs> yeah oh, you. so I found that out I know oh, I found you. that out and I was just like all of these young people coming up and that's obviously when I, we started we started so young and I'm sure that's yeah. how other people felt but like now we're getting you know to hey. our 30s it's like uh, seeing uh. all those younger people <laughs> keep that to yourself I don't know how old you think I am <laughs> just kidding I it's said we you know <laughs> we're getting there Still I released a, a song called 25 that's just absolutely just planted me in my mid-20s and everyone mm. now knows my age, but it's okay because with with age comes wisdom, and that is very true. I totally believe everything happens how it's meant to happen, and um, when it's meant to happen. And something that I had to deal with in twenty twenty was I was originally on the CMA Fest lineup back then, and um. it didn't happen obviously because the world shut down. Um, and so on the, I believe it was the eighth of March, I got the email saying congratulations you're performing at CMA Fest and all the information. And then the 13th of March, literally the country shut down. And then my travel agent was like, my travel agent, that sounded so adult. My mum's travel agent was like, oh, maybe we should just hold off on booking things. And then a week later, I got the email from CMA saying not this year. So that was really hard to cope with and wrap my brain around that I had this incredible career changing, in my opinion, life changing opportunity and it was like kind of ripped from me and then I had to just deal with that so I believe though that if I did have that opportunity back in 2020 when I was four years younger I wouldn't have handled it as I did last year and it wouldn't have presented other opportunities that I have had since so everything happens how it's meant to age is just a number etc etc <laughs> motivational quotes yeah come to me for all those pinterest motivational quotes i'm really good at them (laughs) we will we'll come to you everyone all the listeners they'll come to you now (laughs) please dm me (laughs) i have been loving your content recently really um yeah and that is all because of your wonderful sister i mean i'm sure you have a part of it too but your sister (laughs) has been doing some wonderful things shooting all your content so how did that come about like how I mean, I don't have a sister, but how did you ask her or did she offer to do it or how did that happen? I bawled my eyes out to her about how I had no money. Um, So my sister's name is Amy and she she's my older sister and she's always been very, very good with the camera, always been really good with like the lifestyle nature kind of side of things. Um, But that gig for Tony Hadley back in 2020, I asked her to take some photos for me on stage at the Tivoli. And that was kind of the first experience we ever worked together in that capacity. And she, she, I was about to say she slayed, she slayed it. How embarrassing that's immortalized forever. She slayed it. And, um, I, you know, every now and then we'd ask her to do it over the last few years. And then in, in, February this year I went to her house and I just we were having like a planning day because I am self-managed and I I am my own creative director and all of that and I said Amy like these are all my plans and I want to do a clip for every song but I want to release six songs this year so that's a lot of clips and that's a lot of money and that's a lot of work as well and then I started crying um standard for the younger sister and um I said please Will you please? I know you know how to do it. I know you've never done it before, but will you please just film one music video for me? And if it doesn't work, like it, we don't have to do it. And that's probably exactly how I said it, to be honest. Like, please, please, please beg. Um, and so we did the music video for 25 that weekend. I gave her like six days notice. And again, she slayed. It really is my one of my favorite music videos. I then, we sent all the footage to Jasmine Smith from Jasmine Producers for um, editing. So... Amy doesn't edit them, but she takes all the footage and obviously there's a lot of thought that has to go into that with like the shots and the angles and the storyline. So there's a lot of work and she does it because she loves me and because I have no money. Um, But she also takes all my photos and we actually did a photo shoot a couple of weeks ago for a new song coming out later this year and I'm very excited because we... (laughs) 
we learned where the um the preset button was on Lightroom, <laughs> like the preset for effects. We didn't know where yeah. that was. We've just been editing ourselves for the last three songs, and oh, now yeah. we've learned where um the preset preset button is, and now we have presets. It'll so the edits life. are really, really good. Um, <laughs> and I'm really excited about these new videos and new photos. Yeah. Yeah. Go Amy. I love that. Go Amy. And I love that she does it just because she loves you. Yeah, I know. Me too. It must be nice. <laughs> it must be nice. It is nice, actually. <laughs> um, and it's nice because I've noticed that the photos that come out of a session with Amy now, I look my most comfortable. And mm. that's so key because when I'm doing a photo shoot with, a different photographer I've never felt uncomfortable on set by any means but obviously no one beats your family and so to have my sister taking photos for me and filming the videos is really cool and um something I'm really really proud of that every clip she's done this year so far has been added to CMT which is just so cool for her I think that's awesome yeah I'm sure yeah. she's loving it too <laughs> yeah uh, yeah she does love it it's fun it's so fun i yeah, I, we're filming a clip next week, so I'm back in video mode, but it's, yeah, it's really cool. Well, I can't wait to see all of the new things you have <laughs> happening. All of the I things. I do want to ask you about who you're loving at the moment. Mm, uh, yeah. You obviously mentioned you listen to quite a range of genres. So who are some of your top most listened to or who are you just loving at the moment? Who's doing something really cool in your sphere? Get out your Spotify. That's what I, I have literally, to do. Yeah, I'm getting out my Spotify because my – oh, right now – uh, that Olivia O'Brien song is out of your life, out yep. of your league, but I want you so bad is what I was just listening to. Mm, I saw um, that on TikTok. It's so catchy and I love mm. her branding. I'm all about branding. So when I'm writing a song, I can tell that it's going to be a good song because if I can already like see it in my head. Yes. I'm the same. Yeah. The visuals. Yeah. The visuals. Yeah. Because yes. your visuals are so strong as well with what you do. And I think it's, well, A, it's really fun, but I also think it's so important to be able to bring people into that part of you and your music and your mind's eye, essentially. So that's just something I'm obsessed with. Um, top of my like songs is Diet Pepsi by Addison Ray. <laughs> yes, I've seen that too. <laughs> that's actually really good and it's, it's really catchy. Um, some other music I've been really liking lately, Ella Langley's record, Hungover, mm. is really good. Better Be Tough is my favourite. Um, Abby Cohn is unreal if you don't yes. know her. Yeah, you I do. Love her. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's really, really good. She releases a new song called I Hate Springsteen, but, um, her song, If You Were A Song just is so Oh, I haven't good. heard that one. Ooh, it's a, I think it's like a year old. It's so good. Um, yeah, some other people I've been really listening to, Lacey K. Booth's record, The Loneliest Girl in the World. Oh, that is a masterpiece. You have to listen to that. And then there's this artist, I don't know where she lives in the world. I don't know anything about her. I just listen to all her music. She's called Emily James and she does mm. pop, like indie pop kind of music, but I'm just obsessed with her lyrics. Uh, and then, uh, oh, she'll love this. Our friend, Lydia Sutherland, her song Reason to Be is in my life songs. So um, Canadian. We love Lydia. We love Lydia. <laughs> in this house, we stand Lydia. And um yeah, I'm obsessed with that song. So females, all females at the moment, which is really cool. Yay, we love that. I actually need some new music at the moment. Like I feel like I'm on a bit of a, I don't know, blank space in my head and I've like kind of listened to everything I want to listen to and I'm just like, wait, yeah. I'm waiting for Sabrina Carpenter's new album. I'm very excited Same. For that. One other record, if you're listening, if you're wanting a new music and like different kind of music, listen to Clyro, is that, or Clairo, however you say her name, her new record Ooh. that came out in July. She has a song called Sexy to Someone and it's so good. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. listen to that. I'm gonna add all of these to my likes. Please, after this. so yeah. thank you. I'll have some new You're songs welcome. to listen to in the car. I've been listening to like podcasts. I'm like, it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. You just want to jam out. Yes, I go through <laughs> phases. I'm like, sometimes I just want to listen to podcasts. Sometimes I need music to like hype me up. Do you ever sit in complete silence? No, that's the scariest thing I've ever heard in my life. Do you? Uh, yeah, like all the time. Oh my god. I mean, I'm sure that's good for you. Is it though? Because then I end up talking to myself. <laughs> I, I think, think I need to nice. find a new therapist. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think that's good. Like everyone always says you should like sit in silence and like be with your thoughts. And I'm like, distract, distract, distract. Yeah, distract. <laughs> I don't want to know what's going on up there. Yeah. Yeah. I should probably distract at times, to be honest. No, I think you're doing it right. I think <laughs> I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> there is no right or wrong. 
Very true. So mm. what is next for you? Obviously, you have new music coming out. We mm-hmm. have a few shows uh, yeah. coming. And yes. what else are you doing? Tell us. So um, I'm going on tour with Adam Harvey, actually. I'm, I'm opening a small run of shows for him in southeast Queensland in November. Before that, I will be back in Nashville, which is very exciting. And I'm only going for a couple of weeks this time, but it's over Halloween. So I'm excited to be, oh, be in so Nashville cool. with, yeah, during fall. Um, I have a song coming out in October. I feel like that's a secret. I haven't told anyone that yet. Exclusive. And then uh, exclusive. I have another <laughs> song coming out before the end of the year. So if you do the math, eight weeks after October, when will that be? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> before the end of the year. And then... I have a a whole heap of new music as well coming out next year. So there's lots of new music. Um, That was one thing I I set myself a goal this year, at the start of the year, at this planning day with Amy where I bawled my eyes out on her white couch saying I have no money but I have all these plans. Uh, The plan was I wanted to release a song every eight weeks and I've really – I've done pretty well. I think the longest time there was between a song was 10 weeks um, since Time Bomb in February. So – I'm uh, I'm just going to c- try and keep that up as long as I can. That is an achievement because that is hard to do. It's a, oh my God, it is so much work. <laughs> no one prepared me. I mean, who's going to prepare me for that? Probably Google. But I Google didn't prepare me for all the backlog of work that mm. had to keep just constant work, constant artwork, constant uploading to the portal, constant all of this. Luckily, the songs were done and mastered in January, but – Oh my God, it's just been a lot of work, like logistics as well. And, um, but one thing I forgot to mention, and I know you, you're probably waiting for me to say it was, uh, we have a, we have our own show in Tamworth. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Nice. I forgot we got to do that. a little plug. I'm like, I have to do it with Jade too. So I'll do it with you as well. <laughs> Get your tickets, uh, guys. Get your tickets. <laughs> Chelsea, Jade, and I are putting a show on at the Tamworth Country Music Festival. And this is actually my own, my first co-headline or headline in general so um at the festival which I'm very excited to to be doing with my friends yay it's gonna be yeah so much fun. I'm very it will excited. be so much fun <laughs> yeah it's so fun when we get to do this music thing in general but also like with friends I feel like that just makes it yeah. so much more fun yeah like <laughs> even this episode just feels like we're just having a little gas bag you know I just yeah just feeling just you no in my life <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that later <laughs> Via I love the, when you just sent me like call. a yeah a random voice memo or a random Snapchat or something. You're just telling me the story and this update. You're like, I just want to give you an update. I'm like, please, I live for your updates. <laughs> please, yes. Well, because not everyone's in a happy, healthy relationship, Chelsea. Oh, look, it's taken me a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can we can we come back to me when I am and we can have a whole yes, other episode? We'll do okay, an update cool, cool, cool. and you can just talk about how in love you are. <laughs> Everyone will be like, skip. We want her sadness back. Skip. Yeah. That's what people like. It's like, I, I don't even want to release a love song because I feel like that'll just be boring to people. You have a song coming out soonish, don't you? I do. Hmm. Um, or it'll be inter- probably out by the time this episode goes out. That's I would think. exciting. The interviewee um, becomes the interviewer. Yes, now you interview me. But um, it's not a love song. <laughs> no, I know. I know what one it is. I'm like, it's not a love song. But I'm excited nonetheless. Thank you. It sounds like a love song to start with, and then it's like, no. Joke. So it's just love's tricking everyone, basically. <laughs> Obsessed. <laughs> well, I can't wait for all of your new songs. I've loved all of the things you've released. You. So I'm excited for more Chloe Styler. But thank you for giving everyone an insight into your life, your music, what's coming up. It's been great. Thank you for the chat. I have really enjoyed it, and um, hopefully, it was hopefully it was insightful. Of some sort. Yes. I'm not Hopefully sure. I can't even remember. To it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I think I just actually giggled my way through that whole thing. So I'm not sure if any of it was any good. But if it was, let us know. <laughs> yes. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. Bye.